if you are a person who is new to Christianity or you are a person who has been raised Christian or have been Christian for a very long time and you recently started getting serious about your Bible reading or you are a person who just generally wants to understand the Bible better then this video is for you. Let's talk about it. We are going to go through five simple steps that will help you understand the Bible better. And here is the good news. You do not need to be a Bible student. You do not need to be a seminary student. You do not have to worry about being a theologian or having been in ministry to understand what the Bible has to say to you. Step one, buy a Bible or download a Bible app that makes sense to you. For example, if you are not a person who is very academic, the King James Bible is probably not the Bible that you want to buy. You want to buy a Bible that is easy for you to understand. If you are someone that might struggle with reading, and it's okay, we all have different struggles. If this is your struggle, that's totally fine. You want to get a Bible like the New Living Translation. Now, why I say this is the first step is that if you cannot understand what God has to say, how will you grow in your Christian walk? A practical way to look at this is actually the reason we have translations in the first place. So the Bible was translated from Latin to Greek many, many years ago. And that Greek text is known as Erasmus's Greek text. The argument for the reformers to get the Bible translated into Greek was so that the common man can hear from what God has to say in his word. So in the same way, when we look at the 21st century and we have a multitude of translations, but some of these translations are hard to understand, we look back at the Reformation and what conclusion do we come to? Get a translation that the common man, that any man can understand. If we look in the book of Acts, we see a interesting situation. The book of Acts, chapter 8, verse 30, Philip ran up and heard him reading Isaiah, the prophet, and saying, do you understand what you are reading? Philip is talking to the Ethiopian eunuch here. And he, the Ethiopian eunuch, said, well, how could I unless someone guides me? And he invited Philip to come up and sit with him in verse 31. The Ethiopian eunuch in Acts chapter 8, he says, when reading the scroll of Isaiah, that how can he understand if a man does not explain it to him? He was telling this to Philip the evangelist. After Philip explained to him what Isaiah was saying, it was at that point that the Ethiopian eunuch understood what God was saying. Again, it took understanding. If we do not get the grammar in the Bible translation that we are using, it is going to be hard for us to understand what God is telling us. Step two is going to go along the same lines as step one in that it deals with understanding. For step two, if you come across a word while reading the Bible that you do not understand, do not skip this step. Make sure you look it up in the dictionary or Google the word. If you cannot understand what a word is saying, chances are you will not get the understanding or you will not get the meaning of what that passage, sentence, paragraph has to say. A lot of people skip this part thinking 
if I just get to the end of the chapter, God will just speak to me. Not to take away from the fact that God definitely reveals things to us, but part of that revelation is that we were able to grasp His words as He spoke to us. If we don't understand what the first couple of words are in a paragraph or a sentence, we will more than likely lose the entire meaning and that will affect our understanding of the scriptures. Again, step two, when you come across a word you do not understand, look it up. It will help you understand what God is trying to say. And I am not saying that you need to look up the word in the Hebrew and in the Greek and in the Aramaic. No, I am saying that you should look up the word in the translated language that you have in the dictionary of the country that you belong to. It is okay to trust that our translations are accurate. And for those people that think that you definitely, absolutely need to look up the word in its original meaning only, something worth thinking about is, if I don't understand the meaning of certain words in my own language, how am I going to understand these same words in a foreign language? Look up the words in the language that belongs to you first. Step three, start reading the Bible from the beginning of the New Testament. The New Testament overall is a lot easier to understand than the Old Testament. And on top of it being simpler, something else worth noting is that the Old Testament is a lot longer and that plays a big part in understanding. Why? When we are looking at the human mind, something called being overwhelmed is a reality. When we start reading a book and the book is extremely long and we have not been reading for a while, it will make us feel discouraged because it looks like the journey to the end of that book will be extremely long. The Old Testament is very, very, very exhaustive. There are a lot of details, names, genealogies, numbers, years mentioned from Genesis down to Deuteronomy in the Torah itself. Beginning from there is a very difficult task. The New Testament, on the other hand, has a lot of references to the Old Testament. So you're not missing out by starting with the New Testament. What you're doing is you're giving yourself an edge. The New Testament is a lot shorter, which again, when we're thinking about being overwhelmed, it is easier to get past that difficulty. It's shorter. There's a lot of books in the New Testament that are five pages long, four pages long, literally one page long. Also, there are a lot of concepts in the Old Testament that is very difficult to handle. The New Testament gives us an explanation to these concepts that are very hard to grasp. Now, we might not find out what those concepts are in the New Testament, but the reality is when we come across those concepts in the Old Testament first, the first thing that we might think is, how can this be God? How is it that God could let something like this happen? The explanation to questions like that don't come right away in the Old Testament. They show up in the New Testament. And again, if you're starting from the beginning of the Old Testament and you're expecting to get the answer to those questions fast in the New Testament, it's going to be difficult because the New Testament is a very long ways away from the beginning of the Old Testament. Point number four, start reading the Bible one chapter at a time. Now remember, this video is geared towards people who are new to reading the Bible, who have not been reading the Bible consistently. So I am not saying that a person needs to only read the Bible one chapter at a time forever. This is only addressing those people who are new to their scripture 
reading. Now, why do I say that we should read the Bible one chapter at a time? It goes back to the idea of avoiding the feelings of being overwhelmed. When you are new to something, it's better to take baby steps in that thing, whatever it is. When you start reading the Bible, it will seem confusing. So it will take time for you to truly understand what is being said. Remember, we want to look up the words that might seem a little confusing. We want to spend time trying to research what is really being said in a sentence with a word like atonement in it. If you take the time and read the Bible chapter by chapter, you're going to be in good shape, one chapter at a time. All right, you guys are doing great so far. We are on our last step, step five, and here it is. While you're reading the Bible, write down the questions that you have and listen to this part. After you write them down, pray about those questions in the name of Jesus before you go and ask anybody or do any research about that question. This step might seem a little silly, but we need to look back into the scriptures to see why this is important. The Bible says in John 13, 14 that the Gospel of John chapter 14 verse 13 says, whatever you ask in my name, that will I do so that the Father may be glorified in the Son. This is Jesus here speaking. The Bible says that if you ask anything in my name, Jesus says if you ask anything in his name, God will definitely grant it. Scriptures are clear. Whatever we ask God in the name of Jesus, God will provide for his children. Now, the question might come up, what if I pray for a car? Or what if I pray for a new house or for my cat to come back to life? Why don't I get the answer to those prayers? Well, we do see that the Bible says whatever we ask according to God's will, God grants and it is definitely God's will for his children to read the Bible because reading the Bible understanding the scriptures is understanding God and God's own language when we pray to God in the name of Jesus for an answer to a Bible question God will send the right people your way if God doesn't answer that question himself by revealing the answer in the scriptures he will use somebody to make the answer to that question that you wrote down right clear thank you guys so much for watching if you have any questions at all please feel free to shoot me an email at f-e-r-g-u-s-o-n-w-l-j at gmail.com. If you feel like my videos are adding value to you, please subscribe, like the video, and also, if you have anything that you want everyone that is viewing this to share, please comment below. God bless you guys, and see you later.